Hey guys, today I am going to talk about something posted on Reddit, supposedly coming from a Card Kingdom employee begging people not, again, not to pre-order from Card Kingdom. I'm not exactly sure because the person's identity is hidden if this is actually an employee of Card Kingdom or maybe they're an employee of TCG Player, right? So, again, take it with a grain of salt. Um, this post comes from somebody who we don't know why they're posting uh, or who they are because the whole idea is that they have an NDA. That always raises flags for me, especially pre-order. So, yeah, let's uh, just read it and then talk about it. As an employee of Card Kingdom, please do not, do not support pre-ordering singles here. The war conditions are horrible. This is a long one, so I apologize for it in advance. Let me start out by saying that everything here is written in hopes of improving conditions for all my hardworking co-workers. That, and I also signed an NDA that hinders my speech. So forgive me if I leave out important details. So there is very, very little details or even examples of of this. There's just very generic, very vague statements. So maybe that's why the command zone is not going to come out and say what it is. But both the command zone and Tolarian Community College are left-leaning, hard left-leaning. And obviously they care a lot about unions and employee rights. So I'm shocked that they haven't responded to this accusation as of now. When I enjoyed, while I enjoyed the company of many of my co-workers, I haven't had a worse employer in 15 years. This kind of gives him away. I mean, in the U.S., you can get a job at 16, right? So he's at least 31 years old or older. Uh, probably older, right? Um, because a worse employer that and that kind of indicates that maybe there was a worse employer in 15 years. And does that really make sense in the timeline? So do they have an employee? So I was looking at the Mox Boarding House interview and the employee looks like he's like 18 or 22, maybe 25 at the Otis. Obviously, that's not him unless, unless again, he's lying. I don't really know why he would be lying. So you can kind of figure out uh, the age of this individual. Card Kingdom has changed a lot over the past few years, but most notably all the past eight months. During this time, over 70% of the company has been fired, quit, or can't relocate with a company to Monroe, Washington in two weeks' time. So I do think all this information is public. The quitting in two weeks' time, that's not how it would go. I doubt a company can move all that inventory in two weeks' time. I, I doubt that they can figure out the lease contractually and so on. Um, I don't know. So a lot of this stuff, people on Reddit just assume is real. But like I said, you don't have... So if I were Card Kingdom, I would obviously be looking for people 31 or older. And the older they are, you know, I think the more likely it is. And I would be looking for uh, if 70% of the company has been fired, then obviously this is, if things are correct, this is a current employee of yours. So, most of the employees have been replaced by temps, and training to memorize additions has been dropped. If you notice eras, and they're talking about this, undertrained and overworked. I will not be the only one to say that this company, Card Kingdom, treats its employee like expendables, but that's what... I mean, like, none of this stuff is detailed enough to know if this individual is an actual employee. During each pre-release event, Card Kingdom requires two weeks mandatory overtime. Wizards of the Coast has b increased the rate of releases, yada, yada, yada. I, if I were Card Kingdom, I'd just say, man, like, you know, I have all these temps, like, if you don't want to work here... Um, we'd be happy to provide you severance. We'd be happy to make sure. So Card Kingdom has for a long time pretended to be above this, right? Above that. But in reality, it's just like, it's a local game store. It's, it's exactly what this guy says it is. As a union, we finally were able to stop Card Kingdom from taking our PTO away from us. 
if we couldn't work overtime, specifically employees were forced to use PTO to cover mandatory overtime hours they couldn't work. Card Kingdom charges PTO for sick leave. So this type of stuff seems like it's contractual. Like, is it not possible for a union to work on this? I'm, I'm not sure I understand like what the purpose of a union is if they're not able to negotiate these terms. You cannot take a sick day if you do not have PTO. Again, all of this stuff is negotiated. Probably if they you get less pay, they probably allow you to do this stuff because in the, in the end, it all balances out. There's a bottom line here. Whether or not you want high higher pay and days off, we can see. If you call out sick without PTO, you'll be written up. Two write-ups disqualify you from being able to apply for promotions and freeze termination. Thus, people have been getting fired for calling out sick more than the PTO they had available, regardless of how legitimate their sickness is. I, I mean, mental illness is a big, probably a big reason people are calling out. Um, and if you use all your PTO, like... What what's this company supposed to do? They're supposed to pay you to be sick? Like I I don't know what I I'm not understanding because in a typical company, if you're sick, then the company says, "Oh hey, well, we just don't pay you." Okay, I think one of the best examples of Card Kingdom's treatment of employees was over the New Year's holiday mandatory overtime, which required for Ravnica remastered, and even though we received a paid holiday off. It didn't count towards our 40 hours worked and we didn't receive overtime pay during the mandatory. So again, this is all legal stuff. If, I mean, if you want to sue them, sue them. But I think it's kind of awkward when like I'm almost I'm positive you can identify the exact employee. Because they would have worked during Ravnica Remastered because he's using we. Anyway, I don't know. It, it's kind of. A weird scenario, let's put it that way. But does Command Zone need to speak out against this? It looks like ever since the uh, Union. And the first comment is, Hope Command Zone reads this, laugh out loud. Even if they read it, highly doubtful they addressed it. And while TCC seems to have no problem calling out Wizards of the Coast, I don't see them doing the same for Channel Card Kingdom. They defended advertising a Ponzi scheme and better help. They don't give a shit. It's money before values for them. What happened with the Ponzi scheme thing? What's the issue with better help? Legit don't know. Talk therapy is only covered by insurance if the practitioner makes a diagnosis. And typically if you have already reached your deductible. It's very common to have to search around for a therapist that you work well with. Better help or not. Yeah, they are sponsors, money over values. Kind of wild that you have this take when Professor has been criticizing Wizard of the Coast since days when his channel wasn't big enough for it to be a huge risk. How much has Wizard of the Coast sponsored TCC? I don't believe the Professor has worked with Wizard of the Coast much and part of this is believed to be consistent criticism of them. Prof has been the man spreading the word on many misdoings of Wizard of the Coast and probably isn't as tied as he could be at the size he is. CK is a drastically different situation. I believe in Prof to do the right thing. In the end, maybe just keep his mouth shut until further information is found, meaning that he doesn't shout them out as his deal with them doesn't require it according to past videos. I do believe if most of what OP said is true, I believe the prof professor will try to Get them to change before dropping the sponsorship and nothing improves or worse comes out. Yeah, pretty interesting. Uh, paging Jimmy Wong, right? 